We've talked about before how we first started working on this together, and just like every married couple in the world, we couldn't remember exactly. We couldn't remember exactly, like was it 1984 or 1985? Right. I, the only Definitely thing, lunch at the Russian Tea yeah, Room. Yeah, I remember meeting at the Russian yeah. Tea Room, and I remember pitching you an idea that you completely rejected. That's right, and was, it was very embarrassing because yeah. it was before we'd even ordered lunch. Right, right. So, I should have waited. I should have waited till we had till we ate a little bit and we were having our coffee. But it was okay though because we got the idea out of the way. Yeah. And then we had a conversation. You, me, and Andy Scheinman. Right. You sort of talked about your life, right. your lives, right. your lives as single guys. Right. And then that was the end of the lunch. Then you right. came back to New York. You were staying in a hotel in Central Park South. Right. And I went up to your room. And I, all I remember saying is that I had an idea. I didn't know what it was going to be. I had an idea, uh, scenes from a friendship. It was basically, I had seen Ingmar Bergman, scenes from marriage, and I was trying to find any way that I could codify in some kind of screenplay form all of the experiences I had been going through as a single person for like 10 years. Yeah, that and is making... so not what happened. But what happened? What did I say to you? What you said was that you had this idea for a movie, that you'd right. always loved this idea. Two people become friends right. at the end of the first major relationship in each of their lives, right. and they make a decision not to have sex because it will ruin the friendship, and, and then, then they, they have, have sex, sex, and it, and it ruins, ruins the, the friendship. friendship. That's what you said. <laughs> that was it, and that's yeah. the movie. Yeah, yeah. And you said it, and this was not the second idea you'd thrown at me. This was like you'd come in with a whole other thing. I don't remember what it was. I don't remember. I remember the first thing I threw out. I remember you rejected it. Then there was it. a second thing, yeah. and then you said, this sort of is a coda to the whole, well, this meeting didn't work either, but I'll throw this one I'll out I'll throw there. this out and see if you'll take and that. You, I said, yeah, you I can right do away. that. Yeah, I yeah. can do that. Yeah. I immediately saw beginning, middle, and end. Right. I remember getting in a taxi to go home and absolutely knowing the structure of the movie, knowing that yeah. it started before it really started, right. um, that it would be a couple that kept bumping into each other at all the wrong moments. Times of their lives, yeah. And then suddenly, right. you know... I remember that the process of the, when we started working on it, um, you being the great journalist and reporter that you are, you basically interviewed Andy and me to get stories and, th and yes, things. Yes, it was a horrifying experience. Just to hear about our horrible. dating lives and how we had, what we had gone through. You, yes, what you had gone through and what you had put other persons of through. another sex through. Yeah, yes, yeah. it was horrifying. It wasn't surprising. It wasn't like you said things and I went, oh my God, are you trying to tell me that? And yet it did have its moments right. of, oh my God, are you trying to tell me that? But that's what I think made the movie work so well because you being horrified or whatever by, oh my God, this is what these guys do. And then you adding the elements of, what, oh my God, this is what women do or what women think about. That's what I think made the movie work so well I because think so too. because we just were honest about what really happens between men and women. Right. 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 Yes. Now you said it was like 1985, and so I made two films I think between the time you first started working on it, and then we eventually shot the movie. That's at least Isn't that two. what happened? At least two. I did Stand By Me and, and Princess, Princess Bride. Bride, both of those films. You and started you working on it before me, Stand By and Me. And you said to me, I'm going to do, you're going to start this and I'm going to do Stand By Me right. and then we'll meet again and then I'll do The Princess Bride and then I'll do this and that's yeah, what happened. Yeah. And so there were these long periods of time in between where you'd do, you'd do a draft and the draft would sit there. Yes, it would sit certainly there. did. And then we'd go back in, into it together, <laughs> and then you'd do another draft, and then yeah. that would, it would sit there. And then, and then after I finished uh, Princess Bride, then we started working together, you know, kind yes, of together. Yes, and that's on. when you had the idea that I think was so brilliant for the movie, which was the couples. Right. I thought, oh, that could be a little uh, motif that we run through the, yes, through the film. Yes, and of course, at that moment, I wanted to call the movie How We Met. Yes. Or how yes. they met. Yeah. We had so many titles for this and movie. If you remember, during the shooting, we had a contest with the crew. We said so you could win a whole case of champagne if you could come up with a title. We had all kinds of Harry, this is Sally. Harry, this is Sally. Well, that was not stuck bad. for a while. I liked that one. Yeah. I liked it more than when Harry yeah. met Sally. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't like when Harry met Sally until I put the three dots there. The three dots I at know, the end. I know, I remember you, the, this. The three theory. dots were a big but thing for You kept me. saying, but what about the three dots? And I kept saying, I still don't like it. I don't care about the three dots. <laughs> I like the three dots. 
<laughs> yeah. No, I know. So we had it there. That was the thing. And and for the longest time, they didn't get together in it one time. The first draft. Yeah. They yeah. did not get together. Right. And that, to me, has always seemed like, forgive me, the true ending. Well, it did to me, too. And that's why we I kind of went with that for a while. Because I couldn't imagine how he they could ever get together or how a man could ever get together with a woman. Uh, but... <laughs> But but it was it made sense to me but when I met Michelle. Meant, I met Michelle on the movie. It, then it made sense they could. I, get. Yes, I understand that. But yeah. before you met Michelle, you had made a decision Decide to do, yeah, that yeah. they should get together. And but I didn't feel good about it. I felt odd about it. I knew commercially you had to you know kind of how to do that, but it didn't it didn't feel right. You know what I mean? It well, didn't I feel think right. for the story, it doesn't really feel right. I know that there are people, because I meet them all the time, people come up to me and say, oh, my wife and I were friends. It's just like when Harry met Sally and right. then we I got together. Too, yeah. And then I also have way more people who come up to me and say, oh, I'm in this Harry-Sally thing, and it's really <laughs> not happening, and blah, blah, blah. And I say, don't yeah. let the movie fool you. Those people really don't get together yeah. in real life. Well, it made them feel better. You make them feel better. Well, I try to make them feel better, but I do think yeah. that if you, that if two people meet each other and they don't do it, yeah, it's because something's missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. And it's hard to yeah. make up for that. Yeah, but I've also heard the stories of people who said we were friends for a very long time and then it did work. I know, I yeah, know. Yeah, so what, there were those so they two. They must know something. Yeah, so there were those know. two. So yeah. I mean, it could work. It yeah. could work, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that that was that was interesting. That we always had that that initial ending that was that way, and then we went the other way on it. But then, af when we started really working on it, and it was very late in the process, we were in your office in California, and all sorts of things came into the movie that it's embarrassing to me took so long. To come into well, the, the movie. whole thing about ordering. The whole thing about ordering, yeah. and that was because we were ordering. Well, because lunch. I watched you order. I know it was horrifying. I watched you order, yeah. and I said, "My God, this has to be in the movie." I know, and I remember the sandwich too. W which one? What was it? It was avocado and bacon and sprouts. Yes. And cheese, but I wanted half of it on the side, and <laughs> and the mayonnaise <laughs> in a little. Le yeah. You know, yeah, it was yeah. just unending. It was yeah. it was the nineteenth time I had done my horrible ordering. But thing. my favorite thing about the fact that you know you did order that way and that we did put it in as part of her character is we also included it in the scene when the four of them get together at the Cafe Luxembourg, and Harry says, uh, you know, Sally orders the things in the way she's ways, a great order in yes. the way that even the chef can't imagine how good it's going to come out, and that is the truth about you. Aside from all the craziness about ordering, <laughs> you make their dishes better. Thank you. You Rob. improve what they do. <laughs> it's like a a prime ticket to get an invitation to one of your dinner parties because you are a great cook. It's not just that, you know. There's a reason why you're ordering it that way. It's not just your particular crazy yes, taste. Yes, I do know with, better. But you also yes. know that it's going to be better. That's right. That's yeah. right. But anyway, there we were, and you said to me. We've told you all this stuff about guys. You tell us something about women that we don't know. And it was really like, I dare you to tell me yeah. something about women yeah, that yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, that happened in my office, I remember. And yeah. I said, okay, women fake orgasms. Yeah. And you said, <laughs> no. not with me. <laughs> they don't, right. And, and, <laughs> and, you, and then you said, how do you know? I said, absolutely with you. And everyone does it. <laughs> and you said, no way. And you really didn't believe it. That yeah. was the most yeah. exciting thing about but it. But then I did a little unscientific survey around the office it and found out you It was worse than you an, right. an unscientific. You went thundering into the bullpen where they yeah. kept all the poor women who worked at Castle Rock yeah. in, the, and assaulted, in the unwindowed And assaulted area. them with this question. And, and did your yeah. Rob thing. <laughs> Basically, get in here, right? Yeah. And yeah. on these, like, six... Terrified looking women came into yeah. your office. These days it would be sexual harassment. That's I'd, be, right. I'd be arrested for sexual harassment. And fired. And probably fired. Yeah, yes. I'd have to fire myself. Yes. But. Yeah. And you said, do, do women fake orgasms? <laughs> and <laughs> they all said yes. Yeah. At one time or another, they all said they had done it. Yes. And that was when I went, oh my God. Well, the, and then you wrote that great scene. We wrote a scene and then we had a read through. Yeah. With. Meg and Billy. Right. 
And we didn't have a faked orgasm. No, no, initially we didn't. That was an idea. And that Meg was said, Meg's Meg idea. said I could fake an orgasm. And then we well, said, It wasn't well, even in a restaurant. No, we said, let's put it in an incongruous place. She just threw out that idea. And then we said, well, let's find an incongruous, crazy place that we could put it. And then yes. Katz's Deli became the place. And then my mother became, which is my favorite thing, that she's now one of the top 100 in the AFI. I know. <laughs> top 100 most memorable lines in movies. That she's in there with Brando and Humphrey Bogart. But that all happened right at that, right after that read through. Yeah, yeah. Was restaurant faking the orgasm. Right. And Billy said, oh, well, then one of the customers can say, I'll have what, what she's, she's having. having. He came up with that line. And yeah. you said, and I know just the, the actor to say it, my mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was yeah, there yeah, it all yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, it happened like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I told my mother that I, I was hoping that it would be the topper line because I knew the scene was going to be funny, and I was hoping hers would be because of the topper because if it wasn't the topper, then I might have to cut her. I was nervous <laughs> that I might have to cut her. She said, that's all right. I'll just spend the day with you. It'll be nice. You'll come, I'll get a hot dog at Katz's Deli. But it worked out great. I mean, it's you never know. I mean, people always ask ask me. I'm sure they ask you about that. You, did you know that that scene was going to be what it was? I mean, you know, it would be funny. We didn't know it's going to be talked about forever. That scene. Well, or I once saw the movie without that scene because on airplanes they don't show. Oh, they didn't oh, really? show it because wow. that's what got the movie the uh, ludicrous R rating, R rating yeah. that it has. Yeah, yeah. And so it was snipped out on the airplane God, and. And so I'm on the airplane, and they're showing the movie, and about at least half the people on the plane had seen the movie. And they went, what, what, and, the, and there was this kind of, oh, because it was just, <laughs> the scene just ended yeah, right yeah. before she faked the orgasm. Oh, they had the scene, but they just They had the scene yeah. kind of up to that moment. Did and she then, talk about faking an orgasm? Yes, and then it just oh, sort of hysterical. ended. And the movie is not as good without it, I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those memorable scenes. I yeah. mean, you know. Well, I remember when you first screened it, you called to tell me that the audience in the movie, all the women were laughing wildly and the men were completely silent. Yeah, <laughs> because and, they, they had the same experience I had when I first heard about it. I know, and that's amazing because it wasn't that long ago. Well, yeah. it was a while yeah, ago, yeah, but yeah. still it's hard to imagine that that was a genuine secret from half the population, but it was. Well, one of my favorite screenings that we went to, uh, and uh, you know, apropos of that scene, was we, we, we had a royal premiere, and Princess Di was, was still around. And the whole time I'm watching this thing, I'm thinking, what the heck is she thinking about? I mean, you watch a movie, through the eyes of somebody else when you, you know, you're in the thing like that, oh, my God, every little reference, oh, well, how is she going to take this? Now we're building up to the orgasm, oh, my God, oh, my God, how is she going to take this? And I, she laughed, she was but some dude laughed, and she leaned to Billy. Billy told me this later. She took, leaned over to Billy. She said, I, I would be laughing a lot more, but I know people are looking at me. <laughs> and then she asked to have the film shown at the Buckingham Palace with her friends, and then she said she could laugh and enjoy it, you know. But when she's sitting there, she had to act as if, you know, it wasn't that funny. That, I remember that. Yes, well, you know, you said, did you know? You never know, yeah. right? You never yeah, know. you don't know. You don't, I mean, and you was, don't... It was so under the radar, this movie. It was so, you know, it had two actors that basically weren't box office in right, any way. Right. Um, Meg was, it was her first leading right, role. Right, right. And you know, your friend Richard Cohen once said to me, one of the things that we didn't put in there we should have was the true thing about uh, men is that they don't listen. Yes, men fake listening. Fake listening. Women yes. fake orgasm, men yes. fake listening. Yes. So we didn't, yeah. we should have, you know, yes. we should have had that in there. We didn't. We, I don't know if you've ever gotten this comment, but uh, people often ask me, well, there's these two people that they're professional people. They're living in New York. They're single people. They both have their own apartments and their lives. And yet, every, the whole movie, they're talking about relationships. Knowing single people, don't they ever talk about their careers and about work? And the answer I always give to them is, yeah, they talk about work all the time. I just didn't run the camera during that period. Yes. I only run the camera but, when they were talking about it. But I remember talking to you about that, and you said, yeah. I don't care about that. Yeah. And it was... It was actually a great relief to me because I think people are always trying to stick that into yeah. movies, and then you stick it in 
in the beginning and then you have to keep sticking it in and sticking it in because you right. can't just stick it in once. Right. You've got to stick it in three times right. and then you stick something into a movie. It has to keep yeah. right. popping right. up. Right. So then you've got this big fake subplot you didn't right. care about at all. That's so funny because a lot of times in a movie they say, well, you're, you're shoehorning a relationship in. You know, you're faking a, a, a romantic relationship. Here we were saying, no, we don't want to fake the, <laughs> the, yes. the work part of it. We want to keep that out. So, yeah, no, because it was really, it was about just the two people. It wasn't about what they do for a living. And... No, well, I mean, one of the great reliefs of this movie, of course, there was no studio. No, Castle Rock was the studio. Yes, I mean, you were basically yeah. it. So yeah. if you didn't want work, we didn't have to put work in. Right, And that right. was the end of that. Right. It was such a relief. It was a mainstream picture, and I don't know these days if you can make mainstream pictures that don't have two stars that don't have the obligatory scenes that they all ask for. It's very hard, I think. Uh, we were lucky because we had an independent company that could that had the wherewithal to finance something. I think that, that was a, a big part of it. How much did that movie cost? It cost fourteen and a half million dollars. You know. Yeah. Nothing cost fourteen and a half million yeah. now. Yeah, and it did uh, you know, it did what it did. And I remember that we, we went to the Deauville Film Festival. That was great. We had fun there in France. That was a good thing. It was a great experience. I'm sure you see it when you have your movies that you make that come up on television and stuff. Um, you remember the experience making the movie. Have you had a life experience making a movie? So it's like a whole movie. You watch, oh yeah, remember we did that? We had that moment and stuff. That's what happens for me with this movie. This is me, for me, because I met my wife during the making of this movie, and I had a great pleasurable experience shooting in New York City, going to a great restaurant for lunch, which was a block or two away every time. To me, that's what I remember more than anything, more than the fact that now it became a hit and people loved it and whatever. It was a great experience for me. For me, it was like, you know, I remember, I remember the day you were shooting in Cafe Luxembourg. Right. And and that scene was so great, and Bruno Kirby did some great improvs yeah, yeah. while it was happening. I mean, one of the things to me that was so amazing on that movie was, because I'd done most of my very young career, not, I wasn't young, but my career yeah. was, um, <laughs> as a screenwriter with Mike Nichols, who was yeah. very, you know, the script is the script, and yeah. we stay with the script, and we honor the script, and we rehearse the Comes script. Comes out of theater. Comes out of theater, but you, of course, coming out of TV. Yeah, everything changes. Everything changes, and working with Billy, who was so hilariously right. funny, and right. Meg, who is so yeah. unbelievably gifted. Yeah. And I learned that you would just have to be a fool not to let the script right. change right. when you have people like right. that. Right. So there I was at Cafe Lux watching this scene get funnier and funnier as as it yeah. went on. And I just remember walking on into this gorgeous spring day and thinking, oh my God, this movie is going to be so fabulous. And that night I went to see the dailies from the day before. And it was from the first time you shot the last scene in the movie. Oh, which, which we didn't use. Yes, thank God you yeah. didn't use yeah, it. Yeah. And it was a disaster. <laughs> right. It was a total disaster. That scene was a tricky yeah. one. I yeah, think yeah. you shot it three times. Yeah, yeah. And I remember walking out into the spring night and thinking, this is going to be the most <laughs> humiliating experience of From my life. High to you the know, low, just yeah. 12 hours, yeah, yeah. you know, there yeah, yeah, were 12, yeah. eight hours, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's right. I remember yeah. we did shoot that ending three times, and we finally got it right. I think yes. we finally got a really good, satisfying ending. Yes. Billy came up with the thing about the crinkle yes, in your nose. Yes, that was great. He noticed that on her face, that, that, that her nose would crinkle up. And that line he had, when you know that you want to be somebody with somebody for you the rest the of you want the rest of your life to, to start, start as, as soon, soon as, as possible. possible. That was all great. I said, oh my God, that you know, that's, that's really powerful yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah. And then they wind up on the couch, just like we are. Now there's another story. They're, yes. not, they're, they're one of the bunch they're of stories. They're just yeah. like everyone else. Yeah. Just a story. Yeah. It was a great, great experience.